Welcome back. You're watching Money, Money, Money. Before we start answering our viewers' queries, let me hand it over to Manasvi Gilani who joins us with Mythbusters. Property and property link investments are very dear to people. And why not? The appreciation of that asset class has been significant over the years. But here's what you need to know if the property is inherited. If you thought that inherited property can be given away by will, you're clearly mistaken. Because self-acquired properties can be passed on by will by the owner to anyone, even those other than the successors. But if the properties are inherited, they can't be given away by will. In fact, will devolve upon the entitled successor of the property under the law. The other misconception is that, that the NIIs are not allowed to inherit property in India. But that's not true. Whether you're an Indian origin or not, nothing stops you from inheriting property in India. Even foreign nationals who may have not even visited India can inherit property in India. In fact, NRS can in inherit not only residential but also commercial property. Only few extreme cases may require prior IBI approval. Not only that, even agricultural land and plantation property can be legally inherited by INRIs. Lastly, your myth that no taxes levied on inherited property needs to be busted. According to income tax law in India, if an individual possesses more than one house, then one of the houses will be considered as self-occupied and is excluded from tax payment because no income tax is charged on self-occupied property. But the other house, whether the house is occupied or not, rented or not, tax payment is required to be made on it. And the same rule applies for the NRS as well. So keep those mythbusters relating to inherited properties in mind and take an informed decision. All right, Manasvi, thanks very much for that. Now on to Can I Afford It? If you're looking for a bit of extravagance in your life, well, we're the people to call and our expert will tell you if you can afford it or not. Joining us first up is Yash K, who calls in from Mumbai. Hi, Yash, what's your question? Uh, my income is rupees 30,000 and out of that expenses goes around 18,000 and I have a savings of around 80,000. Plus, I have an insurance premium which is uh, around 15,000 per year. I am a professional writer and I would like to get into the Bollywood industry someday. And my question is, if I can purchase an antique typewriter worth rupees 12,000. Alright, and how are you planning to pay for it? Um, idea is to, to pay it through my savings. Alright, Mr. So Inter, do you think we can give him the approval? Let's take a look at this. You're struggling at your, uh, you're new to a profession, you're struggling at it and I think you've not built anything so far, right? Uh, no corpus, nothing for the future. At this stage, to spend this much money on a sentimental purchase that does not add to your income or add to your asset clearly makes no sense. Of course, you just can't afford it. I mean, just. Just forget it. Well, Yash, that's the answer for you. It's time to be a little bit practical. There's no room to be sentimental at the moment. Your request has been denied. Up next, Vishaka George, who's a student from Delhi, now joins in on the line. Hi, Vishaka. What's your question? I'm currently studying. My pocket money is currently rupees 15,000. Uh, in addition to that, I recently received a lump sum award of uh, rupees 15,000. I don't have any savings or insurance uh, given the circumstances. I wanted to know I can go for a holiday worth Rs. 30,000. Okay, and how are you planning to pay for it then? I will pay for this from the lump sum award that I received. What do you think, Harsh? Can we give Vishaka the go-ahead at least? Right now is a good time to learn to plan how to deal with lump sums and I think uh, the way to deal with windfalls is to use them in your overall planning. So I think you can say this is a partially allowed, uh, you should do it uh, at 70% uh, spent out of a lump sum is not really warranted. I think maybe a 10 or 20% spend to celebrate so feel good and invest the balance is a great planning for the future. Alright, uh, Vishaka, so the answer for you is you can do it, but should you? 
Well, not advisable. Finally, we have an email query from Sachin Deshpande who has written to us from Pune. He is 31 years old. He's a professional, earns about 80,000 rupees a month, of which his expenses account for 25,000. He has savings of 2 lakh rupees and adequate insurance as well. Now he has pursued art in the past and wants to change his profession by doing a professional art course, which should cost about 35,000 rupees. And uh, how she says that he's going to pay for it through his savings. Do you think it's a good idea? So I think clearly he seems to have made up his mind to change his profession and he can't change his profession without doing a professional course. So in his case there is not a question of can he afford it. He is, uh, once you have decided to do the career change, can he afford not to do it? So I think very very clearly he, he should definitely definitely do it. Alright, so Sachin, I guess you knew the answer all along. Harsh agrees with you. But thanks very much, Harsh, for joining us on this episode. And viewers, do remember, you can keep writing to us. Write to money, money, money at network18online.com. You can also find us on Twitter. Write to CNBC TV 18 News. Use the hashtag money. And remember that you can also log on to YouTube to catch all of our previous episodes. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you again next week.